Hello. This video is the first in a series of tutorials teaching you how to use RT Shell from the basics to the advanced. By the end of this series, you'll be an RT Shell expert. Before we get started, let's take a second to explain what RT Shell is if you're not familiar. Simply put, it is a debug console for game maker games. When RT Shell is integrated into a game, you can open a terminal at runtime that lets you manipulate the state of the game. This can be an incredibly powerful tool for debugging and development. You can also include it in the finished product for players to use as a cheat console. It is free to download and entirely open source. Now that we have that basic understanding, let's jump into GameMaker and get started. For this tutorial series, we'll be working with an example project. If you want to download the project files to follow along, the link is in the description. The first thing we'll need to do is actually import RT Shell into our project. For this video, we'll be grabbing it via the GameMaker Marketplace. The link to the store page is in the description. Once you've added it to your account, you can import it inside of GameMaker by selecting Marketplace, My Library, clicking on RT Shell, and then clicking Import. Go ahead and import all the files. Now that we have RT Shell's files in our project, we need to get an instance of it in our running game. Let's open up our object obj underscore gm. This is a sort of game manager object. In this example, it's simply going to run any code that isn't specific to one of our gameplay objects. Getting RT Shell working in the game is really simple. We're just going to add this single line to instantiate obj underscore shell. Now you can see if we run our game and press the default keyboard shortcut to open RT Shell, there it is. It has a few built in commands. This one, help, lets you see all the available commands, but so far none of these are going to affect our game in any way. Let's come up with a good excuse to write a script. In our example, our character can't jump high enough to get across this pit. Tweaking gameplay variables is a great use case for RT Shell. It can help nail down the feel of your character with faster feedback than you'd normally get. Let's write a script to alter the character's jump height. I like to create a new script asset to hold all my RT Shell functions. We'll call it scr underscore shell underscore scripts. RT Shell will automatically detect any global function in your project whose name begins with sh underscore. We'll call this function sh set jump power. The sh gets stripped off at runtime, so in game you'll just type set jump power. The args parameter is how you can access the arguments to your function. It's an array whose zeroth element is the name of the function, and 1 through n are the arguments that you type into the shell at runtime. In this case, our first argument will be the new jump power, so I'm just assigning args sub 1 to a variable. Obj underscore player has a variable called jump power, so we're going to assign it the value of our argument. And that's it! We now have a function we can call during gameplay to change the player's jump power. Let's try it out! Of course, we still can't get over this pit, so now let's open RT Shell and try our new function. I happen to know that the initial value of jump power is 4, so let's try 5. Alright, just barely not enough power, so maybe 6 is better. Yes, we're able to get across now. Of course, since we can play with this freely, why limit ourselves to reasonable values? We can try out silly things and have some fun. What does jump power 20 look like? Whoa! This kid has serious ups now. And while we're at it, why not go the other way and try out some tiny values? Back in GameMaker, let's just quickly go over a few other examples. Any RT Shell function that returns a string value will print it to the console output. This can be useful for getting at debug information. Let's write a script that will print out the camera's current X position. And trying it out, we can now see that the current position is printed to the console whenever we run the function. Finally, why don't we write one more just for fun? This function will set the player's image underscore x scale and image underscore y scale to 4, turning us giant. It should be just that simple, so let's try it out. Maybe this isn't that useful for debugging, but it's a lot of fun. 
This is the kind of function you could write if you were making cheat codes for your players. Hopefully at this point you have a good understanding of how to get started with simple use cases of RT Shell in your GameMaker project. We've only scratched the surface of what it can do, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when part 2 and onwards of this tutorial series are released. Once again, the links to download this example project, and links to RT Shell in the GameMaker Marketplace and elsewhere, are all in the description. If you need any help with RT Shell, feel free to ask in the comments below, or find me on Twitter at Daikon Software or at NickAVV. Thank you for watching, and happy game making!